Hey kitties, it's Triple Feature Tuesday once again. And this week we finish up Tom's Friends Hate Him Month with Russell Brand in movies, I guess. Uh, I know it's only one month out of the year, but Jesus Christ, guys, it just takes it out of me. This was... This was rougher than I remember it being last year. I mean, there's just so many boring movies in this. Like, it just, nothing happens in them. Or the things that do happen in them just, you know, are so predictable and uninspired. I just, I'm just so exhausted. <laughs> I just can't do it anymore. So mercifully, this is it. This is the end of it for this year. And then I don't have to think about this shit for like a whole nother one, so... Hooray! Save the best for last, or the worst. Russell Brand. I mean, like all the other guys, people like him. I don't get the appeal myself. Um... Supposedly, he's very, very clever. He's very, very funny with his stand-up. But, by and large, I just... I don't like the sound of his voice. Uh, his elfin face kind of creeps me out. I'll uh, give him credit. That is a tall dude. Watching these movies, that's the thing that's coming out most, is that he's just... He's a big guy. Uh, also English. Um, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually the first I've really been exposed to him at all because I actively avoid him. He's the, mercifully, he does a lot of comedy movies and, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I just don't track down or really give comedies a try anymore, mainly because they all just seem to be the same thing. It's just really, like, extra contrived circumstances and people being very, very raunchy and disgusting in lieu of actual cleverness, so I just don't really go after it anymore. Or at the, at the very least, not with, uh, you know, the, the, the newer generations of funny people. It's more like I hold out for, like, the, the, the comedian people that I like, like Coen Brothers comedies and stuff like that, so... I don't know. I, I haven't really watched anything with him. So this was like three movies with a guy that I, you know, didn't like for any specific reason other than he just kind of visually bothered me. And now that I've seen him, Jesus, God, he just... I, I mean, it, it, br it brings up the question of do people... Do you put people in parts because they are those people or if, you know, you put them in these parts more, uh, like, often enough... Do they become these people in uh, the collective mind's eye? Because after this one, I just hate Russell Brand even more. He's just an intolerable sleazeball with an English accent. And so, hooray, three movies with Russell Brand. Our menu's going to include Get Him to the Greek, uh, Arthur, and Rock of Ages. So getting him to get him to the Greek, as it turns out, is a sequel of sorts to Forgetting Sarah Marshall, the uh, Jason Siegel, Kirsten Bell movie, which I didn't see either for, you know, the aforementioned, you know, lack of interest in comedy's reasons. So apparently Sarah Marshall dumps Jason Siegel and ends up dating uh, Russell Brand's character, rock star Aldous Snow. And now, Aldous Snow is brought to center stage because he was a real breakout character, apparently. And mind you, as I rail against this one, this one was the actual hit. This one actually did well. The other two, eh, not so much. Aldous Snow had made it is uh, really just insufferable, right from the start. I mean, again, is it the character or is it the actor? Not really sure, but I do know that in these first two movies, Get Him to the Greek and Arthur, they go out of their way to make the Russell Brand character even less likable than, you know, baseline feelings for Russell Brand should, would be. So we start with this ill-conceived song about Africa and, you know, talk about, talk about how Aldous Snow 
is a white space African Jesus or something like that. And then as a result, Aldous Snow's career goes down the toilet. Enter Jonah Hill, another favorite. He works for the record label that is Aldous Snow's record label. His brilliant idea is to have a concert on the 10th anniversary of this show that Aldous Snow did that was apparently amazing and put him on the map. So, Aldous is in England, the concert's in California, and we have three days to get drug-addled drug, drug and alcoholic Aldous Snow from England to L.A. And oh, the hijinks! And, I mean, again, the thing that I don't get is there aren't any actual jokes in the thing. It's just, okay, we're going to take some people, put them in a situation, have them behave badly, and then you're supposed to find it funny that they're behaving very, very badly. And that's it. Over and over and over again. These movies felt so very, very long. I just, I, 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 I ugh. It's the same situation over and over. Ru Jonah Hill's got to get Russell Brand to do something. Russell Brand does a drug or d drink something or does a drug and drink something and then misbehaves. And, oh, God, the spectacle and the commotion. And isn't it cool to be a rock star and everything? And somewhere in the middle of this is supposed to be like, uh, well, there's no plot. Other than just, we need to get him from here to here. But, I get, I, you know, one would hope there'd be some character development. And, um, I guess there's technically some for all this. I mean, again, it's nothing really that inspired the rock star. And, you know, God bless rock stars. The burdens that they bear. You people don't understand how difficult it is to be a rock star and to have to go out every day and do the thing that you like doing and talk to people that worship you about the thing that you like doing and then get paid exorbitant amounts of money and do lots of drugs and have lots of, you know, casual sex. God, my heart bleeds. But somewhere, somehow, over the course of this trip, Russell Brand discovers, you know, what got him into the music to begin with, stops, the, uh, stops drinking and doing as many drugs finds out his son is not his, and, um, you know, I guess becomes a better person or stuff. Jonah Hill has no character development whatsoever. It's like him at the beginning and him at the end, it's the exact same thing, except for the fact that his, uh, he moves with his girlfriend to Seattle so that his girlfriend, or, yeah, his girl living girlfriend has a better work situation, so as a result, they have a better love situation. So, hooray for that. Again... Not particularly funny. Diddy tries his best, you know, with the material that he's got, but there's nothing there. Uh, this is the first comedy I've seen with Rose Byrne. I've previously just seen her in Traumas. So, uh, again, I really just don't make the effort with comedies. Uh, it's like, I can't, you can't really rent things anymore. I don't th feel that comedies are worth it in the movie theater. So, it's really, if it's not on Netflix or cable, I'm not really bothering too much. So she was really, really funny as the uh, equally drug-addled, annoying ex of Russell Brand, uh, sleeping with uh, the awful Lars Ulrich. Some nice cameos. I mean, Pharrell Williams is there uh, a little bit. It was actually funny uh, in terms of uh, the cast. Every other person is a TV comedy person now. It's like the Aziz Ansari, uh, Nick Kroll, Kristen Schaal, Ellie Kemper all pop up uh, in the movie, so that's kind of a lot of fun. But really, it's just it, it's just this monotonous uh, rock star lifestyle. Like, think of Spinal Tap, but without the charm. And really, really long. Really, really long for a comedy. Yeah. Next up, we have Arthur, the remake that nobody asked for. I mean, it was just... What was the point of this thing? I mean, I could have sworn that we said everything we needed to say with Arthur 2 on the rocks, right? I mean, you remember the Dudley Moore films? I mean, honestly, I've never seen them myself. But I mean, Arthur's pretty iconic character and everything. Or at the very least, drunken Dudley Moore is. So, Russell Brand is Arthur Bach, heir to the Bach billions, and just all-around alcoholic, spoiled brat, scumbag, just douche i just again the like the first 10 minutes 
in which he's, you know, donning the bat suit and crashing the Batmobile into the Wall Street Bull. I just, are we supposed to sympathize with him? I don't know. It's not very likable, and as a result, I like him even less than I did going into the movie, which, again, did not care for at all going in. As per usual, it's, it's just, like, like, there's nothing new in any of these movies. Rich guy gets put in a situation where he might lose his riches, has, uh, has to get married to a woman he doesn't like so he can hold on to his wealth, but then meets the girl of his dreams, who's just perfect, but oh no, what, what does he want? The money or love? Oh, what will the decision be? I am on the edge of my seat. Or, you know, something. Anyway, just no, no, no new ideas. Uh, the jokes come from Arthur behaving badly in a situation that he shouldn't behave badly in. It took me a couple minutes to realize that he was affecting a voice. At first I thought my copy of the movie was sped up or something because he sounded really high and chipmunky, but then other people started talking and they all sounded normal, so it's like, wow, he is actually trying to do the Dudley Moore drunk Arthur voice. For people, I mean, I, you know, it didn't make anything funnier, and I don't know how you're supposed to relate to any of it. It's like, oh man, if you had this kind of money, you wouldn't behave. You, you, you would just be a jerk and not get anything either. So, pity him. I just, I don't understand how we're supposed to sympathize or, you know, care about this character's journey who goes from being a rich scumbag to being a rich person but not a scumbag because, of course, he doesn't end up losing any of the money. He ends up winning the girl, but, oh, he's become a better person as a result of it. Understand, this is a movie that not even Helen Mirren redeems. She's just in it. She's doing the Helen Mirren thing, which is always fun, but there's not nearly enough of it. The movie squanders, I mean, wastes entirely Louise Guzman. The man is a comedic genius, and they have him doing nothing. Like, the funniest thing he does is wear a Robin outfit that doesn't fit. Good work, guys. Really breaking new ground. I can't even think of, like, one actually good part in it. Like, at least in the, uh, the Get Him to the Greek, Greek movie, the part where Jonah Hill lip syncs to Mars Volta, that was actually pretty funny. Um, but this... I watched it like two hours ago. Don't... No, it, it was just, it's this disturbing, spoiled man-child that gets everything he wants and then goes through minor personality improvements in order to get even more of the things that he wants. It, just, uh, it was just muddled and boring, and uh, Jennifer Gardner and Nick Nolte are in it for reasons that... I don't know. I don't know. I just... Ar Arthur, it was just such an utterly pointless affair. Just... Oh, uh, God. Damn it, I hate this movie so much! Finally, we have the... Jukebox stage musical turned movie musical Rock of Ages, which... I mean, people liked it. Like, not the movie. The movie didn't do very very well at all. But uh, people liked the stage musical. And I can almost understand it because it's all 80s music. I grew up in the 80s, so I have a certain nostalgia for it as well. But honestly, it just... It is, it's just it's Glee the musical is the problem. It's just we're going to take really good songs and turn them into a soft rock, borderline, poppy bit of nonsense that, you know, doesn't offend anybody, but doesn't, doesn't really inspire any sort of passion or emotion in the song. I just, I, I it, was, it was just so long. I downloaded, there's an extended version, which is two hours and 24 minutes long, which I downloaded and watched for you people. And this is part of why I'm in the state that I'm in right now. It is about the proverbial hometown, small town girl living in her lonely world. Moves out to L.A. to be, find her fame and fortune, become a rock star. And, of course, 
As for any musical, everything is going really, really well until everything is not going really, really well. But somehow everything magically works out at the end, so hooray! I, I mean, they just, they're, they're, there aren't really any characters in the movie. I mean, I know it's, it's a musical, so the characters are, of course, going to be archetypes. But they're so thinly drawn. It's just, it's just they're here, they sing, and they have a dream, and you know they're going to get their dream by the end of the movie, no matter what happens. And so the stakes aren't really high for anybody, and it really, really shows. Like, good musicals hide the fact that there are no stakes uh, in them, or, or things just don't work out as they had hoped, you know, despite it being a musical, which is kind of impressive a few times that it does happen. Not so much with this one. This one is just by the numbers. Uh, here are two cookie cutter leads, and they are going to get every single thing they've ever wanted in life. So hooray for them. When the movie doesn't focus on them, it gets a little bit better because it's a pretty good cast, despite the fact that they have very, very, very little to work with. Tom Cruise plays our Axl Rose analog, Stacy Jacks, and, you know, he's kind of funny in parts, you know, the parts where he's got a baboon that does whatever he wants and he's just completely disaffected and hates everything. Uh, Tom Cruise does, in fact, do his own singing, so good for him. Uh, I'll, I'll give him this. He can carry a tune, but I wouldn't really hold out for that first Tom Cruise solo album. Uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones plays the tippy, tipper gore analog, trying to get all music that is, you know, cool band, and, and of course she has a dark secret that leads to her being ruined and, and you know, being a hypocrite and everything. Paul Giamatti is Tom Cruise's jerk manager and then the lead guy's jerk manager and he of course gets his come up and goes again it's a musical and he's a jerk. Alec Baldwin plays the club owner that this whole thing kind of revolves around and he's like everybody's in wigs and Alec's is pretty obvious and Alec Baldwin's right hand man is Russell Brand. Once again, adopting a different accent because he speaks with a Liverpudlian accent because rock and roll. And I'll give him credit, he is less hateable in this one, mainly because he's not the main focus of the movie and because everybody else is just being awful all around them. And uh, there is minor intrigue in the fact that Alec Baldwin and Russell Brand end up hooking up and become a couple in the movie, which, you know, cool, that was unexpected. I wish the rest of the movie had done anything, you know, even remotely as interesting, because that was basically the high point for me. The covers are, it's like lukewarm, runny skim milk. It's just, you know, it resembles the thing that it is covering, but that's about it. It doesn't inspire any sort of emotion. And half the time, they're mashing things up together in ways that don't really work. I mean, the the, the uh, good mashup, the two songs have to have a similar beat. And yes, they're all rock and roll songs, but they're really just ma uh, mashed together in ways that don't really work. Like, uh, we're not gonna take it and we built the city on rock and roll. Um, Jukebox Hero and play, uh, I Love Rock and Roll. And uh, More Than Words and something else. All of them were terrible. It was just Oh, God, and it was so long. This thing felt like four hours. All these, I, I watched all of these basically over the past 12 hours, and they're just so long. It's so awful. We're just so happy this is done. Uh, Russell Brand, I am still not a fan. I'm not, I'm still not a fan of any of the people that I did, I, I did triple features for this month. I mean, like Kate Mara, Kevin James, just still doing nothing for me. Adam Sandler, depends on the movie. Channing Tatum. All right, I'll give you this. You're not a deal breaker anymore, but I hate this month. I'm so glad it's over. I'm just going to do nothing but fun shit for the next couple of weeks, and I can't wait to see you guys then. Bye!